Coming up on Talk is Cheap, an alien interview. Yes, I believe this is a real alien filmed at S4, the subdivision of Area 51. And a mysterious ancient coral reef built by dragons? And Mel's Hole, have you ever heard of it? Yes, this is the bottomless pit. All that and more up next on Talk is Cheap. Welcome to Talk is Cheap, where cheap is talk, and talk is cheap. I am Dan Holfeld, and with me... Dusty Long. And Pete Hallblad. Thank you for joining us. This is... We appreciate your support. We had a lot of comments. Always appreciate the feedback. Let us know what you like, what you don't like. And don't be afraid to bitch and moan, because that's what you guys like to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bitching and moaning on the internet? What? 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 I've never heard Are of that. Are you crazy? Yeah. It's full of positivity mm -hmm. and happiness. Yes. Rainbows and fucking unicorns. Um, I'll kick things off here. Uh, this is actually a clip from, I don't know if I have the date. I think it was back in like the 90s. They aired this, and I'll put the whole entire show. It's an hour long in the show notes here. This guy dropped a tape to a TV studio about having footage of an, the alien being interviewed at S4, which is, if you don't know what S4 is, it's a subdivision of Area 51. Mm. Okay. And I really think that this is legit footage. Really? Yeah. And, and what, what year do you think that this, was, this supposedly took place? Uh, approximate, I'm not looking for an 90s. 90s, yeah. Okay. So it's very footage it should be pretty decent. It was all right. You know, it ain't HD. They didn't have HD in the 90s. I can't believe it, unless it's HD. Well, and, and the, and, <laughs> well the nice thing about knowing it's from the, the 90s and, uh, is that they didn't have nearly the capability of photo and movie manipulation like they do today either. So that, kind uh, of, you know, the, the CGI yeah. Yeah. It wasn't as prevalent. You know, these Photoshop you know programs that were out there, but they weren't user friendly enough to get yeah. everybody to and that's really true because i watched the matrix the other day and i was like whoa that's cg and you can really tell mm -hmm. which when it first came out I was like, wow this is the coolest thing ever and number one or isn't the other ones the first one because when they dropped that that little a uh thing in uh <gasps> keanu reeves's belly button you know yeah okay and it's sitting there dangling you can tell that it, you know I, you know i don't know maybe i watched it too many times but it really looked out of place or not really but it looked more out of place than normal because it keeps on doing, but watch uh, the first Ice Age movie. I shit you not. Watch the last one, the last Ice Age. Then watch the first one. The landscape is bleak. You know, it just seems really drab and dreary. And then the new ones are all colorful and whatnot. It's really interesting that that CG and animatronics, how far it goes. Yep. You know? So, okay, good. Let's see what's going on. Yes. But anyway, this guy, his name's Victor, and he's, he's the guy in silhouette. Because of his unwillingness to reveal his own identity... Victor's story stands or falls on the credibility of the tape he supplied. Here, exclusively, for the first time anywhere, is the uncut, uninterrupted alien interview tape, shown in its entirety in real time. I think I may have seen seen this bits and pieces of this before is this where the alien supposedly sick and the doctors come in and yeah. check on him as well i think what really gets me about this is the way his body starts moving after a while you can tell it's more organic instead of mechanical yeah i don't get that chuck e cheese kind of singing bear yeah. robot feel with it i love chuck e cheese <laughs> But what they were trying to do here is like interrogate them more yep. or less, try to get answers about their species. Do we get to hear them communicate? No. Well, they communicate telepathically. Telepathically, okay. So what's the bouncing ball? Thing? I'm, I'm thinking that's his heartbeat, or some sort of yeah monitor of something. Maybe yeah. It's a pretty irregular heartbeat. Because you can tell it starts. It's going, it starts whacking out here when he starts having trouble. It 
wish somebody come in and turn a light on. Yeah, that right. was the other thing too. They said the the lighting because if you know what the grays, they can't handle yeah. bright well, light. Well, look at the eyes on him right there. That is not a bright sunny creature. Yeah. You know, the eyes are big. It looks yeah. more accustomed to to night or maybe underground. See, now he's starting to have trouble. Yeah. You can tell the what I presume his heartbeat is starting to go more erratic. Yeah, it's much more frequent now. Yeah, there's some kind of device that. And now he's just got his head's just jolting. They're almost like he's coughing or yeah. something, look, looks like. Could it possibly be his, like, brain wave? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, some sort of, yeah. Now here the doctors are coming in, right? Somebody's yeah. coming to render assistance. Cool reflection in his eyes, look at that. And they shine a light in them. Checking the passage wave, see if there's anything caught. Is what a doctor would do. ABC, airway, breathing, circulation, right? I think that's how it goes. Oh, there's a shot of his body there. You can see a little bit when the flashlight. I mean, they're not. They're pretty good actors if they're they're doing it. I mean, it looks like a, a fairly legit response. They're kind of holding them. Right. You removed the soundtrack from the tape before you turned it over to the... Oh, that's fishy right there, though. Removing the soundtrack well, from the tape. Let him finish. Okay. Program. That's correct. I can't allow the voices of the project personnel to be heard by the general public. There's a very good chance their family or friends on the outside okay. might recognize them. Yeah, Isn't right. your purpose? In I would like to say, with that disguising there, if I worked with that guy, I'd probably know who it was. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm not, sure that's yeah, a wig. Imagine, oh, I'm sure it's a wig and glasses. So, okay. <laughs> See, the thing I was saying, because his shit's all yeah. over the place. It's like, yeah. Okay, the so maybe beard. I stand corrected, but that's interesting, you know, because he was kind of still. It's weird though, because. He's releasing secret footage from the government that could potentially get him killed, yet he wants to protect other people's voices. It's kind of weird. you think they'd throw it all out. He thinks that it should be out there, though, so he's, you know, one of the people that want yeah, to Yeah, oh, absolutely, it. yep. Yeah, just to get the information out there. It, that is pretty compelling. I mean, it kind of fits the, the stereotypical description, you know, you hear of Grays. Right. But they have, later in the video, like I said, you can go through and watch it, but I don't want to play it all here mm -hmm. now. They go through, analyze the video. The, the video is legit. There was only people that saying, well, you know, it could be a dummy or whatever. Yeah. But there's one guy that specialized in the effects. He said, that's like the best looking thing I've ever seen. There's this other guy that's hell bent set that it was fake. And you're always going to have that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. yeah, you're going to, no matter what you say, you're, somebody's going to take the opposite point. You know, um, I, I think in the back of my mind, I, I think of Jim Henson and when he came on the scene in the, I believe it was the 70s, you know, when he came on with his puppets and stuff like that and I'm not saying that you know it's anything like that but I just you know the kind of, just with the way the lighting was um, and we didn't see any big movements or arms or whatever you know potentially for a, it could be a puppet but you know it's compelling nonetheless because it's way better than some of this other alien footage that gets out there right. and I have seen this one before it's been around a long time and I haven't nobody's ever really come forth and debunked it and said, right. you know, oh, here's the alien dummy, these are the two doctors, or whatever. So. Yeah, and I gotta say, I, at first I was uh, I was really skeptical because of the dark lighting and everything else. So you guys explain. The eyes thing makes sense. It does. Yeah. Um, well, if a gray showed the light, too. If a gray's ever coming after you, that's the Ooh. thing to defend yourself is shine a bright light in their eyes because they can't handle it. <gasps> but didn't they say that when, you know, I'm all... Some of the research, right? When it grays abduct people, there's always a bright light shining down on them. Is that to blind us? Because there's always they're always walking towards like the car or whatnot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'll ask, I'll really ask next time light. they grab yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's part of the light from the UFO or what the deal is there. You would yeah. think that they wouldn't yeah. want to do that, unless of course they're using that bright light as some kind of telepathic. Because a lot of people say they freeze and can't move. Some of those might so. be. In my lab's military abductions where they oh. freak people out that mm -hmm. way. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Either that or it would be like the same reaction that a deer would get in like headlights. Yeah, maybe it would completely freeze them. Yeah. And that's what I was, I was wondering. Because which, which is what the military's objective is, is to scare the hell out of you. Well, and yeah. think that aliens are bad. 
Of course, why not? Well, and, and that, and, and it does, you know, if we get a light in our eyes, we have difficulty seeing past it, what's behind it, helps yeah. them conceal their identity course, as well. as small as they are, they probably get pretty close to you before you actually really notice it anyway, but I don't know. And then on top of that, I, I was kind of skeptical all the way to the point where uh, the doctors came in, and when they, uh, and this is where it really, it's, it's a small detail, but for me, the small details are making yeah, it Yeah, absolutely. Well, the doctor used the, the cloth and wiped his mouth. So he shined him in the eyes. I didn't see any eye, you know, pupil dilation or anything. I don't know if you would be able to or whatnot, but he shines it in the eyes and everything else. But then he's old and he takes that cloth and he wipes whatever's coming yeah. out of the mouth. Now that, to me, is a step that really wouldn't necessarily be something that you would throw in there. I mean, ultimately, he's choking whatever. You could just do the eyes thing because that's what the American people or all people. Oh, yeah. Is, it, was a nice, it was a nice touch if, yeah, it was, if, if it was, you know, well stage or whatever. Yeah. Or thing. it was like what they would do in a situation where this... Yeah. He's having difficulty breathing. There's one thing I want to mention here, too, that he said those uh, EMT or whatever, they, the medical personnel, they ain't, they ain't chosen on their skill. They're chosen on their ability to keep secrets. Oh, yeah. So course, they yeah. obviously don't have the best medical personnel that they should have. Well, even so, I mean, wiping the, the mouth, I don't know why, but that for me kind of like, well, and, it's and, an extra step that's not needed. Yeah, and if you notice, they were like kind of holding the head of this, this creature, this object, I'll say, Still, like, kind of almost trying to restrain it a little bit, yeah. too. So it, uh, again, a nice touch, you know I mean? It's interesting because you'd think that if you were going to produce something to fake to people, if you really didn't have much of a background or if you want to do it, you're going to follow what they do on TV. And mm -hmm. if you watch the TV shows or movies, if someone's starting to choke, no one sits there and holds, I mean, they shine the light in the eye, you'll see it on CSI and everything yeah. else, right? They shine the light in the eye looking for the pupil dilation, but you don't see them, like, reach down and wipe the mouth. Yep. That was actually, I mean, for me, as a skeptic especially, it's those little details that kind of make or break something. That's an unnecessary step, and I don't see why they have it. So for me, it kind of made a, the, the video a little bit more legit. Um, and I like it. I really do. And, again, like I always want to believe, but, <laughs> Jesus, why do we have such poor lighting with everything? I know. Blurry. What the yep. fuck? I, I just want to state, again, this is one more thing. You put these puzzle pieces together... Yeah, I'm looking at that whole picture. Yeah, yeah. You can you can sit and pick apart one, but not, yeah. you start looking at everything. You start looking at consistencies, yep. and you know I, I brought this up in previous discussions. When people hoax something, okay, this guy. Let's say, let's let's take and say that this guy went in his basement at his buddies and from his AV college buddies come and make this video. Most people are looking for attention, fame, and money. This guy, apparently. I don't want my identity known. I'm not out there going on tour talking about this, getting paid to speak. I'm not selling selling stuff regarding it. You know, my life book. Well, he did get paid. I would for say he got paid video. to do that. You know, every time they go on TV. That's one well, thing. Well, yeah, that but, sucks, but but they're not getting paid like fifty thousand dollars. He's probably getting a couple nights hostel hotel stay and like a five thousand uh, dollar check. Uh, yeah. I can't remember exactly what the price was. I know he did get paid for it though. But, get so what? What show decent. was this? This was. Let me start at the beginning. It's got that black guy. It's a fake, in my opinion. If you continue to ask questions that are out of bounds, I won't hesitate to terminate this interview. This is powerful because this is not a staged event. This is real. So it's, it's a special put on by something. A TV nice. special yeah. and best selling home video. Oh, yeah, that's Stephen Williams. Reported to show an actual autopsy do? of an alien being from the famous Just, Roswell, New Mexico know, crash. They showed his <laughs> name. They showed his <laughs> name on the bottom of the So, but my point is, knows this, is, this is not a Dateline or 48 hour show that's got unlimited funding to pay these guys. Right, our K2D network special. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, so. We you know, do I, shit, I, I, I guess I would, yeah, he would get paid for this one off show. Uh, you gotta wonder how many did how many did he do? Is he gonna write a book? You know, but we don't know because we don't know who the guy is. Yeah, he exactly. could be that guy for all we know, just dressed up and. Yeah. That's all we knew is his name was Victor. It was Victor. So yeah. interesting. I've seen that. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I've 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 seen that before. I think there's just not a yeah, lot of follow up on that to really. You know, that's the thing. I've, it I know I've seen it. it before too, but you don't really hear much about it. And, you yeah. know, and on top of that, because I'm a gamer, also I look for things like um, reflection of the flesh and the, the moisture, of, you know, and whatnot. Because if it's a plastic mask or something, it's really hard to get that the depth the skin has mm -hmm. because it reflects yeah. light. 
It has it has depth, it has texture, it has moisture in it, and everything else. And a lot of times when you see this shit that's faked, you can almost tell that it is. I mean, just plastic, or it looks really plasticky. That one, and I gotta be honest, and I am a skeptic, but I gotta be honest, that one looked excellent. <clears throat> the only thing is, I've seen other gray p pictures of Gray's one out. They always show a pupil. I mean, he shined the light right in the, in the, in the eyes, and there was no. No, nothing there that I flashed think, or anything else. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, even, why would you even do it? You know, and from, and what, I, that from what I understood, those ain't actually their eyes. That's like sunglasses for them. Oh yeah. And if actually, pe they can peel that off. I guess their eyes under that. Hmm. And, and they're still Maybe sensitive, even, even though yeah. I, yeah, even with that's that. why they wear those. So they're basically a dark yeah. in contact. Then. Yep. Hmm. Uh, but today I brought this article here. Uh, watched this on oh Discovery or something a while back. And this is uh, the mysterious ancient coral reef city of Nan Madal. I don't know how to say that. Moda, Madal? Madal? Anyway, this is uh, off, the, in island, off an island in Micronesia. Micro, yeah. yeah. I can't say these words very well, but um, it's the only ancient city ever built upon a coral reef. It, has, it consists of a set of almost 100 stone and coral fill platforms atop. Artificial island separated by narrow channels and has an outer seawall. Um, did some research on this, and uh, they built this. They don't know how at all because these basalt or uh, stone pillar things here weigh up to like five tons. Each stone is five tons. And at the time, and they, they, there was no way whatsoever to move these things because they had no pulley system or anything else. Um, they're up 15 meters or the walls are as high as 15 meters and up to 5 meters thick. The average weight is 5 tons of each stone, and some weighing as much as 50 tons. Estimated to be the total weight of the basalt is to make up the whole city is 750,000 metric tons of rock to make up the whole city. Um, possible quarry sites have been identified. However, the exact location of the stones uh, used where is that? in the construction is not yet to be determined. No quarries exist in the immediate vicinity, meaning the stones must have been transported to their current location. And that's even more incredible because uh, the builders managed to accomplish tasks without pulleys, levers, or metal to aid the process. This is another, I love this stuff, I really do. Um, so it's, it's kind of like almost a version of the pyramids out in the middle of a man-made island exactly. from... These things blow my mind because... Thousand years ago. Where we talk about aliens like we just did, which is great and, and, and wonderful and whatnot, there's, I'm always looking for that tangible that I can reach out and touch a thing. When it comes to ancient cities and these megalithic uh, cities and buildings, there's all over the damn world, there's these buildings that you can't... They don't put together with mortar. They don't have cement, nothing else. And they fit together perfectly. You can't put a piece of paper between them. So uh, what was, this is all saying that there's a rival of twin sorcerers. Um, they were said to be much taller than the native... I don't know how I say their name. It's right here. There's someone can Pompeians? Pom, pom, Pompeians? Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Feel. Probably it's an F. No. Feel fiends. Feel, yeah. <laughs> hey, in the comments, if someone knows, give me that, how to say it, so it sounds like I'm not so dumb. Anyway, um, <laughs> they built the altar, and they would perform rituals, and they would levitate the huge stones with an aid of a flying oh, dragon. Oh, interesting. Now, we all know, especially here on the show, but for some of our viewers who are maybe just tuning in, there is a little fact in all myth, and I think we all know that. They, they, someone didn't just sit around and come up with shit. Normally something occurred. A lot of times you hear about dragons or flying ships or whatnot. I mean, there's, there's comets and meteorites and all these other great things. And the people that they didn't have the uh, ability to describe what they saw, so they just used what they had most readily available. Sure. They were just, if, if uh, they saw a blimp way back when, when you know flight was never possible, I mean, they would, they would I don't know what it is, it's a, it's a floating hippopotamus. And sure. that's what they would describe it as. So every time I come to something and I hear flying dragon or skyship or something like that, I'm instantly thinking of UFOs. Um, so uh, the blah, blah, blah. And what this was is uh, a tear, uh, the chieftain took it over. Here it is, a uh, uh, kind of aerial wow. look. And this is all built off of the, the off the land, and it's on a coral leaf, or reef, I'm sorry. Um the story really quick is this guy, they built it, and uh, I think one died or something like that. But anyway, the chief that was in charge of it, they would have, um, they ran it like a serfdom. And so what he did was he was in charge of all the land and people, then he had his landlords go out there, and they were in charge of certain groups, and everyone had to bring him tribute. Because there's no fresh water. 
There's no food. There's nothing there. You all have to get it from mainland, and there's not enough in this area, I guess, to like support this. So it all had to be with uh, um, transported in, basically, yeah, and then or kind of given to him and whatnot. Uh, apparently, what happened was uh, people got tired of his tyranny because that's really what it was. He was a he was a dick, apparently, because uh, I have no better way of saying it. Um, and what happened was uh, one of the twin brothers or something went and had uh, oh impregnated another woman from another island using by feeding her a lime. So he fed her a lime. She got pregnant by feeding a lime. No, feeding her a lime, like a piece of lime, like you put in a drink. That got her pregnant. Yeah, that's, again, history myth that has a little bit of truth. I don't know what that means. Maybe he gave her a pill, or maybe it was artificial insemination. I really don't know. <laughs> so, uh, well, the baby so. in the womb are, knew instantly that, you know, it, that was what he's supposed to do is take over this, this leader and whatnot. Uh, grew up, raised an army, went over there, destroyed them. Um, this is used as a burial ground, too. He sat there and they used it as their own land, but since he wasn't running it the same way, and like I said, everything had to be trucked in, they said, fuck it, and they abandoned it. Uh, since then, it's been used as burial grounds, and the locals think that the place is kind of haunted, and uh, they kind of shy away from it. Um, and I'm going to get to a couple of other little points very quick. Um, there is, this is what's interesting too, where is it at? There is no writing. There is no... Yeah, no art, no carvings, no writing. The only knowledge of the remains has been passed down through oral history um, by the people there. So, and that's kind of the story I was talking about. So, that's the guy's name, Ezekiel. He came from an island um, by another chieftain, blah, blah, blah. But uh, that's uh, that's all great, great stuff. It really is. But what gets me about all this, all right, well, I did that wrong. But... <laughs> Cookie control. Yep, there we go. Uh, what gets me is is the way they they're built. This is the stories are great. I really do like it and everything else. Um, what what drives me is that these cities are built. Sometimes like uh, me, what is it? Michu Picchu. Uh, Machu Mayan, Picchu. Machu yeah. Picchu. Oh, built a on, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> built on top of, of a mountain. There's yep. really no way to sustain it without bringing things in. Again, it's a sacred site. This is kind of the same type of thing. All built with stones that had to be transported with no way to transport them. I can think of the, the what else are they called? The pyramids. Same thing. <laughs> yep. All the time. It happens around the world, and yet we can't explain it. There's no way, even with today's technology, to do this the way they did what it. What I find very interesting about stuff like this, especially the time frame we're talking, mm -hmm. um, back then you, you had a, a strong duty to gather food and just to survive you know you could die you could starve mm. to death yeah. and for them to set up a city like that so detached from a main food source and count on other people from inland to get you food it's it's counterintuitive to how people live that day which their focus was food and shelter and procreation you know oh, yeah. and so it, it's a very frivolous thing to embark upon for the time frame and why build it so tall and so thick, but why build it on a reef? You know, like you said, you want to be even on the land, for one. Yeah, and you'd think just from general safety, you wouldn't want to be out. I mean, they build yeah. seawalls, obviously. And How whatnot, would the fishing be there? You'd think you'd get some sea. Yeah, I mean, you, you seafood would. Seafood and stuff. Yeah. There's no fresh water around there, either. That's a good point. There's there's really no point. And it was chosen by those two, uh, two twin brothers that came from the sky, you know. So yeah, And they were taller, which is kind of an interesting kind of note to make because I think as you as you go and you you kind of look at Orange of Man you introduce aliens you think about the Nephilim you talk about yeah. the giants of the Bible and the giants of Nephilim and, and here's an, another I'll, I'll use the word story but it's a story based on an actual yeah. uh, you know site and you know geolo geographical location um, it's just it's very interesting as, as Dan pointed out earlier you know standing alone you're like you know you're scratching your head oh that's interesting but you start thinking about the other, I guess, hypotheses out there and theories that people have about alternative creations of life, and it, it oh, yeah. fits nicely. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. This is what get, really gets me, are those. I really just... It's the only picture they got? Uh, there's a lot more, just the only ones on here. Yeah, you, I'm, I'm, you said that the one of the twins got the chick pregnant? Yeah, I think that's how it went. By feeding her a, a lemon, lime, which is bullshit. Lemon. Well, 
<laughs> well, it yeah, happens. Right? Well, look at what look at what Monsanto's doing with vegetables these yeah, days. Geez, you know? That was tequila. Well, yeah. The lime was in the tequila. Tequila. Yeah. I was wondering. He just was using that as an excuse for a bad decision. <laughs> when they can't explain something, you know that's that's what gets me. You know, we understand is our procreation is 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 and fornication would be entering a woman with you know this a certain type of way of having sex. But then, if you think about it, there's different ways to create life. You don't have to have sex. You don't have to put your phallus in something else, if you don't understand what I'm saying. So, what's to say he didn't kiss her and somehow pass on his Genetics. DNA? Yeah. yeah, his DNA through a kiss, or you know, a lie or something else. And that's what kind of gets me, is that it's weird, because why can't they just say that, yeah, they porked, you know, it's over, it's done with. <laughs> I don't think they, they never do. They it's, never it's, there's like always, yeah, I don't think, there's yeah. always a way. I don't think there was any <laughs> middle school football team. I bet you they had four. Yeah. But no, there's always some kind of weird way. I mean, look at Zeus and, and all these other. Well, they always again, take some, some kind of, you know, there's always a different way that they're breeding to create these super human. Well, people. you know, even in the, the biblical demigods. sense, you know, uh, in the biblical sense, the Virgin Mary, you know, which people argue, well, it's not a literal translation or whatever, but some people subscribe to the, you know, uh, that it's, you know, touched by God. God yeah. did it, you know. So, I mean, look what God did when he gave him a, when the devil gave him a poison apple, you know. So fruit and food and... and um, Forbidden fruit. Yeah, and, and that, that it repeats Fine itself in lore as well. And, and the, the fruit and the food have magical powers in pregnancy or mm -hmm. mortality, things like that. Yeah. It's always interesting. Knowledge. So... Yeah. I don't want to Pretty get cool. into that side of things. We'll start talking about that. We'll never leave. Well, I think there's room for, for a lot of different viewpoints to kind of meet in the middle. I just want to know how they move the fucking rocks. You tell me that, and I'm, I'm good. Yeah, With that's dragons. All right. yeah, obviously that's flying dragons, yeah. Dusty. Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about folklore and the importance of that um, at, in a different um, episode on a topic that I got. So Ooh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you touched upon it because that'll play in nicely in the future episodes to come. Excellent. Um, however, I'm not going to be that profound or anything on my topic. Um, this is a topic that was brought to me by a fan of the show. Ooh, Paco, oh, really? thank cool. you, bud. Paco uh, is uh, one of our first and most dedicated fans at the time, and he had wanted me to look into a mysterious hole, a bottomless pit, if you will. And what's crazy is that there's a couple stories of these going on, and this is the first one that I came across, and then he said, no, it's this one. But anyway, thank you, Paco. It got, got me on this topic. We're going to talk about it. Is this somebody in the area, Paco? Yep, yep. He uh, uh, lives in the area, I will oh, yeah. say, in the beautiful awesome. Kickapoo Valley. Great. Thank you, Paco. Uh, yes, great guy. Um, so anyway, we're going to talk about a, a hole called Mel's Hole, okay? Um, and this was uh, by a Pacific Northwest newspaper. We kind of kindled the story in 2012. I encourage you folks to go on, on Wikipedia and read it because it's got about everything you could ask for as far as weird aliens, conspiracy, magic, paranormal stuff in it. Now, I'm just going to very briefly touch upon some of the main points. But So what we have here is a gentleman called himself Mel Waters, calling into the Art Bell show on Coast to Coast, okay, claiming, um, and I believe this was 1997 this started, claiming he had acquired some property that had a mysterious bottomless pit on mm -hmm. it, okay, and uh, some of his claims are, are pretty easily debunked, some of them are just, I will say, impossible to believe, and... Uh, other stuff is not so weird because stuff happened to them. Um, there's government involvement, you know. Um, but we'll get into it a little bit, and I'll take us through this article. Okay, here's a, an alleged rendering of the, of the whole rendition of the whole. Um, nobody really knows exactly where. Uh, supposedly, the government has disguised it so you can't tell what it is from the sky. So this isn't an actual picture of it? Uh, it's captured from their news story video. So... I don't believe that's an actual photo of the hole. Okay. But it's a photo of a hole they were using in the news feed. <laughs> um, okay, it, it kind of, they have a little preface here. You know, the Pacific Northwest is, is full of mysteries. We've got aliens, we've got Bigfoot, we've got bottomless pits. Um, what goes even before Mel getting, getting involved is this Native American shaman, Red Elk, uh, 
had experienced this 35 plus years earlier and was afraid of it because weird stuff would happen. Um, and this is supposedly, a, uh, well, here's what Red, Red Elk said on his website on February 3rd about the interview. Basically, basically he was very mistrusting of any interview. He's going to try another one and, and talk about it because it gets edited and people get called a liar and stuff. Very mm -hmm. common theme when you talk about weird stuff. Aliens, UFOs, Bigfoot, what, what, what have it? Oh, you're crazy. You don't yep. know what you're talking about. You're full of it. Okay, so made famous because of an interview on, uh, on Art Bell. Uh, Mel claimed that he had a hole that was at least 80,000 feet deep and full of paranormal powers, okay? How he tested this was by putting fishing line down the hole. I've heard and, of this one. Yep, yeah, yeah. and callers to the show were quick to point out if you had 80,000 feet of fishing line, the actual weight of the fishing line suspended would be greater than the test weight, you know, and it would snap the line. Mm. So some other people speculated, well, it's much shallower than that. It's just that he just kept lowering fly, line down and it just was piling Blowing up at up, the right. bottom of it. Um, nonetheless, it's, supposed, it's supposedly a pretty deep hole. Okay, This article goes to point out that Waters himself is a mystery. He said he sold the property, won't say where it is. People have looked for um, evidence that this Mel Waters even existed. Okay, There's no public records, no job records, so... You know, I guess he could be making up a fake name or whatever to protect himself. Okay? So, um, I'll take it back up to the photo and we'll talk about it. So, again, I encourage you to go to the, to the Wikipedia site because there's a lot more details. So, what happened? Calls in. He's got this hole. He says he's seen some weird stuff. Supposedly, you cast a dead animal into it. It will appear several days later alive. Okay? They... they decided to lower a live pig into this hole. And again, very hard to even prove that this ever happened. This is just part of the story. And when they, the pig did not want to be put in, this, put in this hole. It was freaking out. They lowered it and left it in there. For, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, they lowered it to a predetermined depth and then let it sit there for a half hour, brought it back up. Pig was dead. From fright. Well, from something. <laughs> So they decided they were going to do a, a, you know, a kind of an amateur autopsy on this pig. And when they did, they cut it open. And inside, they found this creature that was like attached with an umbilical to it. And, oh. and anyway, they ended up getting this creature out of there. And the creature was alive. And it supposedly would communicate with them telepathically. It had big eyes. And eventually, uh, crawled and jumped back over into the bottom of this this, me suicide. This, this pit. No, because <laughs> apparently it would come back and communicate with them and stuff. Locals are allegedly very frightened of this hole. They, you know, the natives knew about it. Stay away from it. It's got paranormal powers. Um, one thing when you do a little additional investigation in this is you find out, and, and a lot of it, you know, I know how reliable Wikipedia is, but the stories out there, there's a lot of coverage on it. You can get multiple news sources. Multiple sources. I mean, won't call Wikipedia <laughs> news uh, by any means, but um, and it it talks about just the weird stuff that goes on with this whole. Um, the I guess the precursor to Google Maps, at the time uh, that this guy was was calling into the Art Bell show, the internet was still relatively new, and they had released the military had finally given over satellite images over the United States and different parts of the world, and. Uh, put on the internet so people like you and I could go and you know see aerial views of stuff, um, a very rudimentary Google Maps. And one thing that was validated, he said, "Oh, the area where this is is blacked out on on this on this area." And that was one thing they were able to confirm. They go through the Pacific Northwest in the general area, ten miles, I think it was southwest of Ellensburg or whatever. And lo and behold, back it then it was blacked, blacked out, so you couldn't see it. And they said, "Well." Uh, they did that because there's government installations. They're studying it. You know, they're you know building stuff around it, and they so they didn't want the public to see it. So, not a lot of hard evidence to sink your teeth into this. No one has actually uh, allegedly gone been able to go right, out. Right, that's and the thing. It's like yeah. there's they don't know where it is. Yeah, they won't reveal where it is. A couple people claim to have been able to see it. So check out Red Elk's website. Check out Wikipedia. There's there's a bunch of stuff, but. 
What a crazy story. Well, another thing I've heard is that they were actually like throwing cars down there and shit, and they couldn't hear them hit the bottom. Yeah, oh yeah, there was a, there was a whole yeah, series of them throwing different items in yeah. this, listening for an impact or a splash or something, and they just went down and nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, so they threw a damn car down there? <laughs> There's anything in life? Ah, fuck it, here's a Buick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to America, yeah. you know. Like, so, a trash can. So. Now, this is interesting because... I only know of one actual hole that, you know, is pretty famous, and that's that uh, that TV show is on Discovery. Uh, it's an island over in British Columbia. A, uh, John Wayne, a bunch of people have gone out there and put, uh, tried to figure out this hole. You guys know what I'm talking about. I should have to look it up now, and I'm sure someone out there knows what I'm talking about. Um, my sister watches it with me. I used to watch it too. But there's a hole, and it's a, it's, Supposedly, the uh, pi- some pirate went out there and they built this cove on this island. All right, so yep. it's all man-made. You know, they chopped down the trees. Uh, you can find coconut husks in there, but there's a uh, well or a big hole, and there's an actual TV show where they're looking at it's it. It's a pirate's treasure. I know what you're talking about. What's it called? I don't know. It's driving me nuts. So they, they well, these kids started digging around, and they get so far, and there's a platform, and then they they found a stone with some kind of weird writing on it. And then they get a little bit further, and there's another platform. And then all of a sudden, they got to a, a, another platform, and they start filling with water. Mm-hmm. So even people, famous people up there have gone up there and have tried to figure out how to get to the bottom of it. I think it was John Wayne that poured a bunch of red paint in there. They're trying to find where the outlet was so they could block it from the, from the ocean. They had been attempting to excavate this for like two centuries, yeah. I believe. Like Companies went up there trying to find it, and... Yep. And, yeah, they're combating water. Yep, and they found that the, the red dye actually came out in three different places on mm-hmm. the island and yep. whatnot. Um, there, the TV show, I can't remember what the hell it's on, it's on Discovery. They, they, some other guys have bought it, they tried, they're trying to pump the water out of it. Then they think the, there's also, uh, flagstones, or, I don't know, stones set up on the island to make, you know, like a triangle and kind all sorts of thing, yeah. yeah, okay. So there's a lot of this eerie type thing, I, I was in love with that, I wish I could remember the damn name of it, someone's gonna tell I me was just, comments. I was just reading about so, that, like, a month ago, too, and I can't well, remember what it's called. And they say that either. it's only gonna let you get to a certain level at a certain point in time, it's more, they call it, like, a, an alien time capsule, because we're not prepared yet to see that next level type thing. Oh, sure. So, it's really interesting, I thought that was, like, the hole, to be honest with you. I, I've never heard of this. I, I think this is awesome. I'm going to be looking at Google Maps tonight. You know, I now, now that I mentioned, I think that's the one that Paco had come back to me and said, oh, it was this one I was thinking oh, of. Was it? Yeah, and it was um, on uh, an island um, like in Canada. Yep. On the British Atlantic Columbia, side, there, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, see, Paco and I are on the same wavelength. Yeah, right on. <laughs> Good job, Paco. Yeah, right on. He'll come and be like, yeah, this yeah. is it. I'll be like, damn it, I knew it. So, so we'll have to talk about that in a future episode. Maybe Paco would like to come on. Oh, yeah, there we yeah, go. There we go. Join us for an episode, Paco. Always need new, new people, so. Yeah. Right on. Okay, well, I know not as exciting as some of the other stuff, but, you know, I'd like to be able to come up and say, oh, here it is, and we're going to, you know, go on Google Maps and look at it, but it's right. kind of just get out there. People, uh, do some investigating. Help us out. Let's, yeah. let's, find, let's find this place. We'll start throwing shit into it. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. This has been Talk is Cheap. I won't be here next week. I'm going on vacation. I don't know where yet, but I'll be gone. And uh, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. If you have a story you want us to cover, let us know in the comments below, and we'll definitely take a look at it. Uh, Thanks for joining us, and check you later. Can we crack a window maybe and get some airflow? Move this fan on the other side maybe.